vitamin B deficiency. But now vitamin B is divided into different ones. We have vitamin B1, which is also called thymine. Is it correct? So vitamin B1, which is also called thymine, is the etiology when you have thymine deficiency, you are going to have berry berry. Is it correct? Berry berry is a disease that you can have as sort of vitamin B1 deficiency. The next one is vitamin B2 deficiency, which is also called riboflavin. Is it correct? And riboflavin is used in the maturation of the immune system. So the patient is going to have regular infection. And this is one of the etiologies of infection as being a complication of malnutrition. Is it clear? And also, so that is mostly as a result of that vitamin B2 deficiency. The next one is vitamin B3, which is called either niacin or nicotinic acid nicotinic acid now the name initially was nicotinic acid but it has been changed to niacin because the nicotine that is inside uh, inside the tobacco people were thinking that that nicotine inside tobacco was the same nicotinic acid that was vitamin b3 and so people were taking cigarette as being their complement of vitamin b2 why it is completely false nicotinic acid is not nicotine that's what the name has been changed to nursing. And this nicotinic acid, any deficiency in that is going to result to infections also as being the complication of malnutrition. Is it clear? We have infection. Now, the next one, we don't have any vitamin B4. We instead have the next one, vitamin B5, which is pantotenic acid. Is it clear? Vitamin B5, which is pantotenic acid. Now, for pantotenic acid, you need to know that it is the one that is involved with skin pigmentation. So, when you have a pantotenic acid disorder, you are going to have pelaga. So, pelaga with the skin hypopigmentation that occur in the cases of um, kwashiorkor. Is it correct? When you have kwashiorkor, you have with pelaga. It's a result of vitamin B5 deficiency. Now, the next one is vitamin B6 deficiency, which is also called pyridoxine. So, pyridoxine is in involved with neuropathies when you have low level of pyridoxin you have neuropathy and this is why when you are taking tb medication particularly isoniazid you have what is called a peripheral neuropathy because isoniazid is going to result to a vitamin b6 deficiency so the next one we don't have any vitamin b7 we don't have even vitamin b8 we have instead another vitamin vitamin b9 which is also called folic acid is it clear and we also have this vitamin b9 is very important because it is involved with multiplications of cell it is involved with mitosis so this function on mitosis is it clear? You have function of mitosis, and you have also you have mostly function of mitosis. That's why when there is low level of vitamin B9, you are going to have an anemia called megaloblastic anemia. So it's megaloblastic anemia, and megaloblastic anemia is a form of macrocytic anemia. You need to know that among the macrocytic anemia, you have two. It can either be megaloblastic or non-megaloblastic. Megaloblastic means that the cells inside the blood are going to be poorly segmented and containing more than five to six segments, like the neutrophils. Normally, the neutrophils will contain four segments. But if they contain more than five to six, they are going to be called megaloblastic. And you have that in, in case of megaloblastic anemia. Apart from the anemia, the folic acid also involves the division of white blood cells. So the white blood cells are going to divide, you are going to be low in blood, and so you are going to have you are going to be prone to infection. Also, it can be also involved with low level of thrombocyte in thrombocytopenia. After vitamin B9, we have vitamin B12, which is also called cyanocobalamin. Cyanocobalamin cobalamin is the inactive form of vitamin b12 but in the body it is activated to produce what is called cobalamin now in cobalamin is what is involved in um, the also also in the nervous system that's why if you have low level of vitamin b12 you're going to have also neuropathies 
is it clear and it also associated with a central nervous system disorder it's not just peripheral neuropathy but it can have also central neuropathy in b6 deficiency we had peripheral neuropathy but in b2 you can have peripheral and central and the central neuropathy that you can have here is an amyotrophic lateral sclerosis amyotrophic lateral sclerosis those are the things you're going to have with that because of vitamin b12 now the next one after the vitamin b deficiency we now move to the next one which is called vitamin c vitamin c is also called ascorbic acid is it clear? now this ascorbic acid when there is deficiency of that it results to a disease called scurvy is it clear? in scurvy you have a problem with the production of the thrombocytes that vitamin b is also involved in the production of thrombocytes so you are going to have scurvy in scurvy you have a disorder where you have bleeding gums bleeding eyes bleeding so because of a thrombocyte thrombocytopenia that result is it clear? so in scurvy you have a problem with thrombocytopenia but now this is different from a vitamin k deficiency because in vitamin k deficiency you have a, a low level of of coagulation factors but in scurvy you have low level of thrombocytes is it clear the thrombocytes are the only one that can are capable of making you bleed spontaneously is it clear like bleeding at the level of your skin bleeding at the level of your tooth bleeding at the level of the nose epistasis just bleeding everywhere even the eye is it clear? that's scurvy disease the next one we have vitamin d deficiency you have vitamin d deficiency now vitamin d has different forms we need to know that it is also produced in the body vitamin d that's why um, when you take excessively it can also have as it's a, it is a fat soluble vitamin it should not be taken as too excessive as possible it's also produced from the 